Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I would give you guys a little bit of a tour of the backyard orchard, show you guys what's going on in the garden beds, um, just include you guys in on some perspective, what my expectations are for what's gonna happen this year so that you guys can be excited about what's to come on the YouTube channel. I also think this is a great time to record something like this because it's very early in the spring not a whole lot is going on on these trees. They're just now leafing out. They're just now flowering. Um, so this is a great time, I think, to be able to compare to last year and to have this as a record for yourself, but also for me, so that you guys can um, get some perspective on my yard. But I like to use this because I've been doing these tours for years now, guys. Um, I like to use this as a comparison to say, all right, well, what do we look like at this date? Today's the 27th of March. What do we look like on this date compared to last year on the 27th? And I would say overall, just as a preliminary conclusion, is that we're a bit ahead of last year by about a week, maybe two weeks on certain specific trees. So not the biggest head start, but definitely I've been afraid of a potential frost and we'll talk about that as we go on because we still have about a month left of potential frost. Um, but let me give you guys my expectations for what is gonna happen here as we go along. I don't wanna just show you guys things and say, oh look, there's an apple tree, you know? I wanna give you guys some uh, expectations of what I think is gonna happen and what I would expect, like exactly what I would expect to happen. Um, so the trees here on the patio, the fig trees, um, I'm expecting pretty decent production. I tried to prune uh, these trees to a minimum. I don't really believe in pruning your, your potted fig trees all that much. Um, I think that throws them in a hormonal imbalance and then they like to grow and not produce fruit. Also a bigger tree is going to produce more fruits. So um, I'm expecting a large amount of fruits. However, we did decide to cull a many, many varieties uh, of these figs. We put a lot of them into the ground, um, which is not culling, but we planted about 100 last year. I have more to plant this year. Um, also, we bare rooted a lot of them and got rid of some of these trees that uh, are actually some pretty decent size for some of you guys who may have gotten them. And you're gonna probably get some decent amount of fruits off of those. Um, but because of that, we just have less trees. I'm looking around the patio right now and I'm saying to myself, where'd all my trees go? <laughs> I mean, I do have about 30 in the, in the greenhouse, so I'm not too worried about production. Those are looking fantastic. Uh, but hopefully the in-ground trees, as we go along, I'll show you what some of them look like. There's very few of them just, just starting to wake up. Uh, but these very few, these trees in the, green, in the ground, I'm expecting to really boost our production and supplement our production because the idea here is to get a lot of production to then sell locally. That's our goal this year is to sell commercial figs. You'll see on these, on the wall here, I have some younger trees. These are in five gallons. I have about, I don't know, close to 30 over there. Those are all going to be for experimental purposes. I'm still trialing new varieties, uh, that's really key. Uh, I think there's always something better out there that we can find, even though I've found a number of varieties, like this tree right here is Smith. This is one of my favorites, if not my favorite right now. Um, and I have about seven or eight of these trees because it's such a great tree. So I've been downsizing, um, eliminating varieties that I know won't really work here or work as well as something like Smith. And I've also been making copies of varieties like Smith. Like you see here on the wall, we're making copies of different varieties that I value, but also we're experimenting with some new stuff. Um, the pomegranates here on the patio, we finally got these outside yesterday. Underneath the sunroom, it does a really great job of waking these trees up believe it or not. And they're very easy to wake up. You can see some of them have already broken bud. I'm expecting good things with these trees because we didn't have them in the greenhouse. Um, the greenhouse usually gets them off to a head start, but I end up inevitably, because there's so many trees in here, 
is underwatering these pomegranates and they just don't do well. Um, they don't like life for quite some time. So we'll see how they all do. We'll see if I can pollinate, hand pollinate these flowers or if something is finally going to pollinate them for me. You can see all the experimental trees right over here we have in five gallons. I have so many more to come that are going to be in that five gallon size. We have everything orientated here in this section of the patio. And also there's going to be a section here and that's it. We moved our patio table in the middle because these cherry trees are getting kind of big, but also the orientation of the sun in terms of the day length here, it seems like even right now there's no leaves on the trees, but the further I go up towards this way, the less light there is. So I'm every year it seems like I get less and less light here on this patio. And especially in the fall, this is where a lot of the heat and sun is in the fall. So I'm trying to organize this in a better way to get more sunlight to these trees in the fall specifically. Um, again, here's all of our in-ground trees. We showed you guys this, we've uncovered them, we moved the mulch out of the way. Um, I'm expecting pretty low production out of each individual tree. They're still very young, especially these, these trees that have been in the ground for only a year. Um, some of these trees are even only a year old. So I have some trees that have been in the ground for a year, but I have a, like a five year old or six or seven year old black Madeira KK here in the ground that could actually produce a pretty good amount of fruits simply because it is an older tree. Same thing with uh, my Black Beauty 10 here. You know, things like my Blanche du Cezanne, Border Soak Reese, Fico Love. And then we have some trees back in here which have now been in the ground for two years, which I'm actually expecting really great things out of like Pastelier, Nero 600M, Noir de Barbantane. I don't know if that one's gonna produce really all that much ever here in the ground, Italian 258. And then of course, we have our Salavatsky pomegranate, which did actually not take any damage this year. As some of you guys have known, last year it didn't take any damage. The wood was completely green. However, the buds took damage. And actually it's leafing out right now. So I know for sure that this tree took very little damage, if any, completely unprotected. Uh, however, we only saw about 14 degree low here. But I do know for sure that now that this tree has been in the ground for a year, I would expect this tree to survive every winter here as I have many friends in the area with mature Salavatsky trees. Um, but again, some of these varieties are gonna produce well, others are not, especially because they've been chopped back so much that creates that hormonal imbalance that I was telling you guys about. But preserving some of this wood was really key to getting fruits. Um, we'll see how much the, some of these produce. If they don't produce a whole lot, I may end up taking some out for sure um, and replacing it with something else. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of this giant trial here. We have hundreds, we have, we have really hundreds of varieties and I can always throw something in, take something out, um, and then eventually stick with what I know is really great. So. As an example, I have some two, two raised beds here. We're gonna plant some fig trees in here. Um, and we're gonna let them grow nice and big, nice and tall, and we're gonna wrap them every year rather than chop and covering them like I've done to all these other in-ground trees. We're gonna wrap these the more traditional way, varieties like Verdino del Nord, Campanieri, and um, Neruccio de Elba, so. And I've also got, you can see right in here, all kinds of arugula guys the garden bed is really going nuts and it's really all due to this mesh the location southern exposure everything in here is growing so well i have these snap peas underneath um, simply for shoot production i want to show you guys the uh, arugula here just a glimpse of how gorgeous this stuff looks and i can almost do my first harvest of this stuff um, I've already been kind of tasting this and it's just so, so good. I really seeded this super heavily. We're gonna chop this back 
Um, it's like a cut and come again. It'll keep coming back. It'll keep producing. It'll stop it from flowering so soon. And it's really, really tender, incredibly good. Uh, so that's a big expectation there is that this garden bed is going to be really well, uh, super productive and produce a lot of fruit for me or food for me, I should say, <laughs> in this early part of the spring. Um, now what you should know is that we have these poles set up for more vertical production of tomatoes this year. Um, obviously we're going to get some great production doing it that way, but you can see over here I've created new garden beds and this is all in an effort to potentially hedge against a possible depression that we might be heading into here in the United States. Um, I really did seed quite a bit, um, created these beds in no time. It took me literally an hour to create these two beds. We seeded them all yesterday, which took me about two hours in, in addition to transplanting out some onions. We have the, uh, the cold frame here, which is doing pretty well. I have seeded some broccoli and also transplanted the broccoli in here. Um, and then also the sugar snap peas are doing phenomenal. They're getting very tall. This cold frame is wonderful because it's so warm in there. Um, it does a much better job than this mesh. And pretty soon I would imagine that I'm gonna have some flowers of the sugar snap peas and um, I may end up taking off the top of the cold frame and then putting mesh over top of it simply because, um, you know, uh, I think it may just get too warm in there or I don't know, maybe there's not enough sunlight getting in there. I was debating that in my mind because of how the thing is constructed. It's so high right here that it's kind of shading out a decent part of what's in the uh the cold frame maybe if the sun gets a bit higher i won't have to worry about that um i don't know i'm sort of debating that but you could see this these new garden beds is sort of like again a hedge against a, po a potential depression what we've also decided here is not to grow at the community garden we have so much land here that if we were in a depression and people really were hurting like it's possible with the quantitative easing the amount of money that's being printed, potential inflation of the dollar, that uh, why grow food at a community garden? You never know what could happen. People could get really antsy, steal your food, do all kinds of things. I'd rather just grow it at home um, and just take up some of this land, use it to its full potential. I have so much land, as you guys have said to me so many times, <laughs> that I just have so much land, why am I not growing there? Well, this is my parents' property and it's up to them, you know, um, where I can grow and where I can't. So this year I've decided basically from the edge of this raised bed here, uh, coming all the way out to this location here, we're gonna create a good garden patch right here. It's about 14 feet, uh, 10 feet wide and 14 feet towards us. And that'll be a pretty decent amount of space to grow some food. It'll be less food than I was able to grow at the community garden, uh, but I do have these two new beds right here, which are about two and a half feet wide or three feet wide by about 14 feet um, or 13 or 12 feet. So um, we are making up for it somewhere, but again, I'm gonna have to grow less of it. But the good idea, the good news is I can really put down the quality soil that I love, which is the just natural soil that soil conditioner. I'm going to return the Kellogg's crap that you can get at the store at Home Depot for a very affordable price. We're going to send that back. I'm going to create the garden beds here with the just natural soil as I did by the cold frame. And we're going to grow a ton of food here in this location. Move the stepping stones. Uh, this whole yard is going to look very different. I'm going to take full advantage of this raised bed here because we're going to grow peppers and eggplants in here, um, and the tomatoes, of course, but particularly the, the peppers and the eggplants because they need that heat, they really do, and they're gonna do so much better in this raised bed. I may even consider taking out these poles and growing the tomatoes um, you know, somewhere in this patch here because they don't need as much heat as the peppers and the eggplants. But that's about it, guys. I thought 
this will end for tour one and I hope to see you guys for tour two, potentially even tour three, I don't know. But uh, yeah, thanks for sticking in here to the end. I hope this was entertaining and you guys got some nice perspective. We'll see everybody soon. Check us out on Fig Boss, Instagram and Facebook. Take care guys.